The Vite and the Lost. But why now? After all this time. Why what now? No. Oh. I'm not sure you'd believe me if I told you. After all we've been through. I doubt there's anything that could surprise me at this point. <laughs> all right then. Rouse Joshua and meet me in the mess. We'll talk there. I see we're all here. So, what is it this time? I'm not sure yet. The letter delivered to my chambers omitted a few crucial details. Do we know its provenance? That was one of the details it omitted. But whoever the sender was, it seems the dame held them in high enough regard to point them in our direction. The dame? Well, she's not one to waste our time. It must be important. Important might be an understatement. If the letter is to be believed, Leviathan's dominant is in danger. And someone wants us to save him. Leviathan? So the Warden of Water has finally returned. What has it been? A hundred years? More. The lost moniker dates back at least that long. Even our venerable lawsman would not have been so much as a glint in his father's eye when last the mighty serpent brought his crushing waves to bear upon the realm. But why the gap? I know it can be a few years before a new Dominant's born, but over a century? Should the Dominant of Water's bloodline have been severed somehow, it could have prevented a new Dominant from awakening. But if one has awakened now, he couldn't have chosen a worse time. Every nation in the realm has lost its dominant. If word gets out that there is still one to be had, they will stop at nothing to claim it for their own. And the twins will be at war again, just when humanity most needs to come together. Did the letter say anything else? Only that if I wish to know more, we must meet in person. And that the Veil can arrange a meeting. Hmm. If nothing else, you can be certain it ain't a trap. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm coming with you. As am I. Thank you. Both of you. And Otto? Yeah, yeah. I'll keep an eye on things here. Didn't fancy coming anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I shall leave the Invincible in your capable hands. To the veil it is, then. And it's lucky we stayed here. It was that shouting I heard from the barracks. And you're just gonna fall into line. What else can I do? I'm looking for a Layla. <laughs> you found one. So, will your friends be joining in, or just watching? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not here for your services. We simply want to talk. What you do with your time is up to you. The price is still the same. We hear about the letter.
Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I suppose you'll be wanting to know who wrote it then. Among other things. Look, I'm just the messenger here. There's only so much I can tell you. Specifically? A location, north of town, on the shore of Isla Feist Bay. There you'll find a tent and the woman who can answer your questions. And that's all? Nothing else? Actually, one thing. There's more than flowers in the meadows these days. So keep that sword of yours to hand. Does anyone else think it strange that this woman should prefer to keep to the outskirts of town? Not if she realizes the value of the information she's party to. And the danger it puts her in. We already have a leader in the Dane! for guessing who that belongs to. The embers are still warm. So you're Sid. I suppose I must be. Which means you have me at a disadvantage. Apologies. I am Shula. Tributary of Mesidia. Final haven of the Moats of Water. The Moats of Water. The very tribe into which it was believed Leviathan's Dominant was born. A people notable for their sapphire eyes and ivory hair. Yes, that would be impossible, since the tribe famously... Vanished. Was exterminated. <laughs> Despite the best efforts of both church and state, we are still very much alive. Though we've managed to keep that fact hidden from good Griegers faithful for over a century. Along with Leviathan's dominant. That wave out there. What do you know of it? The surge. Only that it's been there a long time. Since the fall of Drake's Eye almost a century ago. Some claim the two are connected, but none can speak with any certainty. So in other words, you know nothing. Not that I'll hold it against you. The wave was raised by Leviathan in an act of rage. Moments before the waters were stayed, and the icon and its dominant bound within. And you want us to? Rescue him. Yes. You see, a little bird told me about a certain outlaw with a singular knack for putting unruly dominance in their place. And ours is about as unruly as they get. For years, we've searched for someone who could hold their own against an icon. 
Someone just like you. So what do you say? Will you help us? What exactly did your dominant do to warrant this punishment? What did he do? He committed the greatest crime one of his kind can. He was born. But he deserves a better fate than the one my people forced upon him. He deserves to be free. As do we all. Very well. Far-fetched though your tale may seem, something tells me you speak in earnest. So we will do what we can for your dominant. But first, you will tell us everything you know about him and the means of his imprisonment. I can do better than that. I can show you. Care to take a trip across the bay? My people await you there. Lead the way. Right, you might want to hold on to something. We're coming up on the wall, and passing through can take a bit of getting used to. I don't see any wall. Of course you don't. That's the point. It's a glamour woven by our ancestors to keep our village hidden from prying eyes. But don't take my word for it. Watch. of Bacchus wine. Clive, the sky. It's blue, but how is that possible? You do know what a glamour is, don't you? Ours just happens to work both ways, and a good thing too. I wouldn't fancy staring at those sickly clouds every day. And that concludes our little voyage. We're here. It's a long slog to the village, and a hard one. I uh, hope you're up for a climb. You didn't think we'd arrived, did you? The village isn't up here. It's on the other side of the mountain. Of course it is. Watch yourself, Sid. This path can be treacherous. 
If not for the sheer drop, then for the beasts who prowl it. Thank you for the warning. And please, call me Clive. Sid is an alias. You will be pleased to learn, Lady Shula, that I have no such aliases. Is that so, Lord Margrace? It's all the same to me. Crystals. Since when did a bearer ever need crystals? But then, where is your brand? Waiting for me in Sunbreck, if I ever get careless. <laughs> then it's in for a long wait. Almost at the summit. From there, you'll have a better view of our home. Few have ever set eyes on what I'm about to show you. Just so you know. This is not what I expected. Welcome, my friends, to Mercidia. It's been a long time since I saw the North looking so... so... Alive. How I'm is... sure you have plenty of questions, but it's been a long journey, and I expect we could all do with a rest. Our humble village is only a short way from here, if you'd care to accompany me. Let's get ourselves in front of a fire, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. It's beautiful. Shula. And we aim to keep it that way. Are those stones blowing? That's one of the cairns which maintain the glamour. Steer well clear. Ugh! <laughs> 
we not have spared ourselves the mountain crossing by landing further north? In clear view of the bay. On evening tides. Does morning's light return? Open the gates! The tributary is home! Of that dog? All right now, back to your duties. You'll have to forgive my people their curiosity. We don't get many visitors. Or any, truth be told. Then we are honored to be the first. This is quite extraordinary. Like stepping into another world. So do you believe me now? You've made it difficult not to, my lady. But how did your people chance to settle here, in the north? Unless I am much mistaken, the moats of water long called the coasts of Southern Ash their home. Until Drake's horn fell and the blight forced them ever inland, where... We met our doom, along with our dominant. I see you've read the Gregorian Church's account, but perhaps you'd like to hear ours. That building over there is the Witten Hall. It's where my people gather to discuss matters of import. We can speak more inside, once the place is ready to receive you. It shouldn't take long, but you're welcome to explore the village while I see to things. Thank you. We'll do just that. Them then. Look! Intruders! So what do you think of our little haven in the woods? It might not have all the comforts of a southern settlement, but at least it's ours. And there's a lot to be said for that. It can't have been easy keeping this place a secret. Not easy, no. We've dedicated our lives to maintaining the glamour that conceals us. Us and Walius. This man, Walius. Is he Leviathan's dominant? That's right. Though he's no man, Walius is still a baby. A baby? <sighs> Forgive me, but you said that the dominant and his icon were bound inside the Surge almost a century ago. That would surely make him older still. It would, if he'd been allowed to age. But the spell robbed the poor bairn of even that. I'm sorry. Walius was the son of my great-grandfather. Leviathan awoke within him almost immediately. But instead of allowing the lad to live out his life as a valued member of the community, my ancestors sought to put his power to other uses. Sadly for them, the Icons sensed their treachery. 
and summoned a wave so large it would have swallowed the entire village if my ancestors hadn't stopped him. Then it is not the surge that binds the child, but time itself. Yes. Forgive me. I'm still not sure I understand. I'm not surprised. It isn't the easiest thing to explain. Which is why it might be better if I took you to see him. Show you exactly what he has to endure. That is why we came. Then let us be off. There's a road that leads north from the village. It'll take us right into the surge. Are you bound for the wave, tributary? We are, Delina. Have you spread the word about our guests? I have. Everyone knows to treat them as family. You shouldn't have any trouble now, but just in case, I would have you accept this symbol of our people. That's very kind. I look forward to meeting the family. The feeling's mutual. Should the tributary be indisposed, feel free to ask me any questions you might have regarding the village, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. We will. Then I bid you good tide. Our storehouse lies across the bridge. If you're short of supplies, you may find what you need there. But we will have to ask you for recompense, poor as we are. There's a pair of ships just up ahead. Ships? But are we not still leagues from the shore? The quickest route to the surge is due east, past the second galley. Shula, how did these ships come to be here? What do you imagine happens when an icon of water gets angry? Wait, brother, did you have to ask?
I can smell the sea. It's not far now. How will we reach the surge? We'll follow the coastline north. There's a bridge that'll take us across to the cave. Might I inquire about the ray of light? It's what prevents the surge from being reclaimed by the sea. And Wallius by his people. said before that the child is bound within the surge. But you've yet to tell us how we're meant to reach him. I trust we won't have to hold our breath. No. The surge wraps around the cape without engulfing it. If we continue to its tip, there is a path down to the seabed. And the wave's origin. All right. It won't be the first dominant we've met at the bottom of the ocean. It's not much further now. The path seems well kept. Do you and the villagers often come this way? Only me. Once every new moon without fail. It is my duty both as village elder and Wallius's descendant. But surely no one blames you for what happened. Why should you bear the responsibility alone? You misunderstand. I do it because I want to. To show him that he isn't alone, and that there are still some of us who would see an end to his suffering. Suffering you will soon witness with your own eyes. Look at all the droplets of water suspended in midair. Where they have remained untouched by time for 80 summers. It's... It's not right. No. It's not. There. Up ahead. Down in the center. Follow me. He's still primed. 
I'll never forget my first priming. The fear. And I was old enough to understand what was happening. One can only imagine how this poor child felt. He is the victim of an unforgivable sin. Committed by people who saw him as nothing but a means to an end. He must be so frightened. Then I'll ease his burden. You don't mean... I'm not going to hurt him. Contrary to the tales, I don't go around killing dominance for no reason. What if I told you there was a way to remove Wallace's icon? I tell you, you were a madman. It's hard to believe, I know. But it can be done. Though, it isn't without its risks. Part of the icon remains no matter what. So, it might still come to violence? I don't know. It depends on the dominant. I've seen things end well, and I've seen things spiral out of control. But I do know one thing. If we turn our backs on this child, there will be no end to his suffering. And I think that a worse fate than the alternative. Don't you? Very well. Do what you must. And whatever happens, I will own the consequences. Don't be afraid, little one. Let me bear the weight. I think so. I can feel the icon inside me. But something's wrong.
Is everyone all right? He seems calmer now. You said Walius was frozen in time. But he knew we were here. How? I... I don't know. He's never reacted to anything or anyone. Until now. The child has been bound for nigh on a century. If he has been conscious from the first, we must remove the seal at once. It's not that simple. I wish it were, but... There's more to this tale. It would be better if I explained back at the village. I see. Then let's return before it gets dark. I'm sorry, Walias. I will make this right. So, part of Leviathan is inside you now, is it? Does it hurt? No. Not anymore, anyway. Good. Because I still have need of your strength. If you want to know the rest, we should head to the Witten Hall. Of course. To understand the spell which binds Walius, you must first know who we are and what drove my forebears to commit such an atrocity. This tapestry is our story, the one that brought us here. After generations of wandering, my people sought refuge in Northeastern Storm some 170 years ago. But in exchange for our safety, the Gregorian Church demanded we renounce our faith and branded us heretics when we could not. To be exterminated as a lesson to others. And so was it chronicled in the Imperial histories, for anything less would have made the Church seem weak. Yet a handful survived. The few who did fled north and west, and in doing so, discovered two things that would forever shape our fates. The first was an old legend, revealing how to make your very own Mother Crystal. I've heard that one before. Yes, yet it gave them new hope, however false. Our ancestors convinced themselves that they could recreate the Divine, if they could only find a strong enough heart. A living being capable of channeling torrents of ether. And the heavens provided. A dominant warriors. They had stumbled across a nostrum in an ancient ruin, which they believed could provoke a sudden outpouring of a creature's ether. They meant to enrage his icon. Leviathan would have destroyed everything, had our people not made their second important discovery. A means to stop time itself. Where did they find that? The Northerners had no such magic, so they would have used them. When our ancestors first arrived, the land was uninhabited, save for an old witch who lived on the highest peak. Her body had been consumed by the curse, a cruel payment for her long years of service to the Northern Thanes. So desperate were they to prevent the fall of Drake's eye, they'd forced her to devise a spell to stop time. But Drake's eye did fall. It did. 
When she finally perfected the necessary magics, it was already too late. As punishment for her failure, the Thanes exiled her to this forsaken place to live out the few days she had left. Knowing her suffering, our ancestors cared for her as best they could, and in return, she gifted them her spell. That even though she should die, her legacy might live on. So armed with both the knowledge of the ancients and the secrets of time, our ancestors settled upon an ambitious plan. They would create a new Mother Crystal and enchant it that it might endure for all eternity. Thus would our people's wandering, our suffering, finally end and prosperity visit us once more And all it would require was the sacrifice of a single child. A small price to pay, or so they believed. Another victim of man's blind reliance on the Mother Crystals. So we know the seal source. How do we break it and restore the flow of time? Do you recall the Dome of Light on top of the cliffs to the west? Inside lie the ruins of an old temple. It was there that the witch built the Vare, a conduit of sorts that channels her remaining ether into the surge. But it's been a long time since anyone set foot in the place. And now there are others who claim it as their own. Then we shall go prepared for a fight. That said, it may be best if one of us stays behind. You think the village could be in danger? We saw the ether flow from Walius in all directions, but only encountered a single familiar. There will be more. And should even one make its way here, I doubt the walls could hold it back for long. Then I shall stay. The Phoenix will see your people safe, Tributary. You have my thanks. Very well. We should depart at once. I fear time may no longer be a luxury we can afford. The Vare is not easy to find. We must first head north, and then west, deeper into the forest. Oh, I never should have let him go alone. And once everyone left me in peace. Before we turned east at the shipwrecks to reach the coast, now we must head in the opposite direction. Left it is then. There's a large gate up ahead, and beyond it, a cluster of ancient ruins. The temple or the air of ours, as my people call it, can only be reached by passing through them. is crawling with life, most of it hungry, which is why we make sure this gate stays shut. And why you carry that impressive looking axe, I presume? Hmm. Noticed her, have you? The temple is up there. Don't worry, those cliffs aren't the only way to the top.
Are these the ruins? Yes. As far as we can tell, they're part of the same complex as the temple itself. To think of all the people who must once have lived here. These remind me of home. You're from the north, then? Yes. And no. I see.
you see that cave up ahead? Whoever lived here carved a flight of stairs into the stone within. Away to the top. And whatever it is that awaits us there. There, the temple the time forgot. And the various inside? Yes, you can see the spell's path from the nave. What is it? I... I don't know. It's probably nothing. Forgive me, but why build the Vare here? The spell was originally meant to be cast on Drake's eye, and this was the only place with an unbroken line of sight. like to think these ruins are their own. They look none too pleased to see us. Numbers dwindle, theirs seem only to increase, as if they were feeding off our suffering. Be their leader. You're more than welcome to us.
Could have been worse, I suppose. Aye, well, if the forests taught me anything, it's that there's always something worse.
squeezed out the knife. Just inside the dome, yes. But it's what's out here that worries me. Did. The weaker ones. Did you hear that, Sid?
explosion. Just like the surge. Hmm. Another of my ancestors' sins. Shall we? The blue veil shows the extent of the spell's reach. I can feel its ether from here. Shula, wait. Before we cross the threshold, I'd like to know a little more about how these magics work. I assume we'll be safe from their influence. We won't grind to a halt, if that's what you mean. The spell only affects the things that were present at the moment it was cast. things can as well like the ones we saw on the way here and worse probably is this leviathan's doing well it certainly wasn't ours when he realized my ancestors were attempting to cast a spell from here he made to destroy the temple and almost did by the looks of it Come <laughs> on. 
imagine what this place must have been like before the attack. This would have been a hall of worship. There was something similar in my father's keep. The priests would deliver their sermons from the dais. Your father?
must climb then. The fair. Just as I thought. Jill, does this ether not feel somehow... Familiar, yes. I sensed it the moment we arrived, though I wasn't sure until now. You can feel it too, can't you, Clive? She's calling us. You don't mean the witch? I do. Though she was more than that. Much more. She was a dominant. A dominant who once commanded the icon that now resides in both me and Clive. Of course. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see it. Who else would have the power to freeze time? None other than Shiva herself. For her ether to endure after all these years, it, it's almost as if... As if she shared it with another, just as Torgal shared in my ice. Soon it 
died and failed its mistress. Then it leaves us no choice.
Well, let's destroy it and put an end to this. Wait. The spell must be weakened, not undone. But isn't that what we came here for? Did you ever stop to wonder what might happen to the tidal surge if I unraveled the whole spell at once? I didn't think so. This is going to require a bit more finesse. From wind and light, water and earth, let the silent pour of my ice. There's too much ether. Here, let me help. Let us help. I think so. The thread connecting this place to the child should be broken. Meaning Walyas should finally be... Free once more. Leviathan. Our most profaned fragment. Its divinity defiled by the hand of man. Its spirit shackled by his hubris, till Mythos came, bringing release. Now, let the sins of man be redeemed by the hand of the servant of God. After 80 years of imprisonment, I'd be angry too. But I can't let it end like this, Wallis. It's time for you to come home. Your 
Right, right. I heard you the first time. what I wanted. I only hope you can forgive me.
full of surprises, aren't you?
was quite a tantrum. Clive, where is he? Well, yes. Ago. <laughs> Clive, I... I don't know how to thank you. It's all right. We should find him a dry blanket, though. Wouldn't want the little monster catching a cold. There. He's finally asleep. The poor thing had a long day. That makes two of us. So... What happens now? Now? Now, we make things right. How? by providing Walias what he was denied. A place to learn and grow. A family to love and protect him. So that one day, when the wounds in his heart and mind have finally healed, he might decide for himself how he'd like to live the rest of his life. But until then, I'll stay by his side, come what may. Then he's a lucky boy. And not only because he'll have the best warrior this side of the belt to teach him the battle axe. Hm. She'll do her best. Shula. The beast that threatened your home is tamed. The empire that threatened your people toppled. Might it not be time to cast off your ancestors' glamour and retake your place in the twins? Perhaps. It's not as if we have the crystals to maintain the wall much longer. But are we truly safe? Is the world truly ready to accept us for who we are and what we believe? If I remember rightly, you and yours still choose to remain hidden, do you not? We do. Well, your people will always be welcome in Haven, regardless. As will yours in the hideaway. We're allies now. If there's anything you need from us, supplies, food, equipment, do not hesitate to ask. It's kind of you to offer. But we'll manage, just as we always have. Besides, I suspect you'll be needing everything at your disposal if you're going to save the world. I fear much of it is past saving. The best we can do is strive to turn what's left into a world where we can all live as equals. A noble endeavor. And there'll be a place in this world for us, will there? For Walias. For everyone. I swear it. Then we shall be waiting until the tides bear you back to shore.
Do you think he'll be all right? Ralias, only time will tell. But I can certainly think of worse places to spend one's childhood. The moats of water are a fine people, and they will take good care of him. Up by the Vare, Ultima spoke to me. She called Leviathan his most profaned fragment, and told me to redeem the sins that had laid him low. Is that so? The sins of Walius's ancestors were grave indeed. To force him to prime at so tender an age. And to freeze him in time. That he might never know what it was to live. Yet I doubt either of those crimes was the source of Ultima's displeasure. It was that the Icon's power had been put to another purpose than the one he intended. To him, Leviathan must have seemed an aberration. Could that be why Ultima made no attempt to lead me to him? The fear that this profane fragment might corrupt his vessel somehow? Perhaps. Or perhaps he simply deemed Leviathan surplus to requirements. Having concluded that his vessel might be made to serve his purposes without the full sum of his power. His purposes? There's no escaping them. Even here. Hidden away in Mesidia, the blessing of the crystals proved nothing but a prison. A prison into which Walius was born. And from which freedom is hard won. If the world doesn't change. If we don't change it. He'll end up suffering the same fate as every dominant who came before him. Then we must change it. That we must. And we shall. <laughs>